Rebuilding is started at ground zero and 200 meters up on the 47th floor of one of the new towers I'm hoping a demolition expert will help me make Charlie see reason. I'm trying to get my bearings, but I'm assuming this is where the World Trade Center was. The point is, say if Dr. Evil came to you and wanted to do this, actually rig it and blow those buildings, how many men would you have needed? We're, we're fortunate here in that these columns have not been covered yet. Brent Blanchard has demolished thousands of buildings. Okay. So they're, they're, exactly, they're the exact sort of columns that you'd want to rig, yeah? Similar. These are smaller than what was in WTC, okay. but you, you can't put an explosive on this and just have the column blow up. Okay. It, it doesn't work. You You need to pre-cut this in some way. That requires preparation. It requires a lot of preparation. Um, and you would actually have to have some type of explosive similar to this, something very high velocity that will actually cut through steel. That's so, what you see in building implosions all the time. Right. You don't see it, but that's what's happening. That's what you're doing. Yeah. So, um... The Twin Towers, how many times would you have had to have done that process to pull down the towers? probably hundreds of columns, so you're talking about a lot of explosive material, a lot of people who know exactly what they're doing, right. who have a lot of time to work on this. So that's how you do a controlled demolition. Guys come in, pre-cut the steel girders, and wire the whole building. I can't see how all this could have taken place under the nose of everyone working in those buildings. You'd have to pass security, you'd have to make it through the front doors and pass all the cameras undetected or yeah. That's not really that well. far-fetched to believe no. that somebody could though. And let's even say you got your equipment in. You still need access to the columns. I saw... Turner Construction, one of the primary contractors at Ground Zero, occupied the 38th floor of the North Tower and was involved in performing the fireproofing upgrades inside the towers. 
It has been noted that these upgrades were completed in the three years before 9-11 on floors that match up almost identically to the floors of impact and failure on 9-11. Once the cleanup was fully coordinated, the operations were consolidated under the control of two primary contractors, AMEC Construction Management and Bovis Lend Lease. These are the two companies that were originally assigned to the areas of Ground Zero that included the North Tower, AMEC, and the South Tower, Bovis. A truly surprising fact is that at the time of the attacks on 9-11, AMEC had just completed a $258 million refurbishment of Wedge 1 of the Pentagon, which is exactly where American Airlines Flight 77 impacted that building. Arguments over the size of the hole of the Pentagon and whether it was a plane or a missile are, in my opinion, a convenient distraction from the much bigger picture of why that section of the building was targeted and by whom. On September 10, 2001, Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld announced that $2.3 trillion in unadjusted funds were missing from the Pentagon budget. The very next day, the offices whose responsibility it was for tracking that money down were destroyed when American Airlines Flight 77 impacted that very section of the building. The only off-site backup for the Pentagon's black budget financial records was a secure federal office building in the World Trade Center complex. Strangely, it too was destroyed on 9-11. World Trade Center 7 was the largest CIA headquarters outside of Langley, Virginia, and housed offices involved in several large-scale federal investigations into massive stock market and accounting fraud. Not surprisingly, World Trade Center 7 was the first to be cleaned up and the evidence destroyed at Ground Zero. And then let's imagine that's there. And then it kind of carried on straight down into the building instead of just going... Bleh. The building begins to fall, it never ever tips over. But, but they're saying that the jet fuel doesn't burn that high enough to, to melt steel. It doesn't have to. The little columns need to be supported. When it began to fail, as soon as they tip a little off center, they lose a lot of their support. When it tips a little more, as you saw on 9 11, they have no support now. They have to go straight down. So it simply compressed. Brent's been making a lot of sense, and I wonder if he's managed to persuade Charlie. It makes sense. This is hard, you know, because I've held on to these ideas for years now, and I've always hung out with people who said, yeah, conspiracy, 9-11, demolition. But now I've spoken to a guy who explained to me why it stopped collapsing and I and it makes sense.
Do not hold on to science, sorry, do not hold on to religious dogma. Do not hold on to science, sorry, do not hold on to religious dogma. If you're presented with new evidence, take it on, even if it contradicts what you or your group might be believing or wanting to believe, you have to give the truth the greatest respect.